Hey, what's going on guys? This is Ed for me. Today what we're going to be doing is changing the rear struts on a BMW Z4. I got myself the Bilstein HDB6s. Um, these are the ones that are supposed to work with a little bit of a lowered car. Uh, in this case for me, I had the M Sport suspension, so it requires the use of the B6s instead of the B4s. Um, some of the differences you'll see um, in terms of the shock is that it's a little bit uh, shorter to start with. Um, so it's going to handle the uh, lowered ride height a little bit better than the Bilstein B4s would have. Um, I also got uh, rear strut mounts and I also got reinforcement plates for the rear just like I did for the front. So if you want to see a video on how to change the front struts on the BMW Z4, just check it out right here. And uh, what I'm going to be doing here is changing all the um, gaskets, uh, adding the reinforcement plate. And I'll show you a way where you can actually change the rear struts without actually taking off the wheels. Um, it, there's really no point in taking off the wheels in order to get to the bolt that you need to release at the bottom. Um, and all it is is an 18 mill millimeter bolt at the bottom. And the top requires a little bit more work. So the way that these BMWs designed, uh, they, they, in my opinion, they did a pretty poor job at it. Um, you have to have the top up and then you have to remove a lot of the rear trunk liner as well as the piece that actually holds the stowed, um, the stowed top. Which means as a result, you have to actually remove a lot of pieces in order to get to those rear strut mounts, um, the top bolts. And so I've seen a lot of pictures on how to do it, but no videos yet on YouTube, which is why I'm documenting this for you guys to see. Hopefully it'll be useful for you guys as you um, do this project yourself. Um, it shouldn't take more than a couple of hours to do all right, so first thing that we actually got to do is just close the top. All right, then we're going to pop the trunk and let's go take a look at what we have to remove in the trunk. So for the trunk, the rear top strut mount bolts are actually behind this piece right here. This is the main piece that we have to remove. This is the, all the parts that we have to remove in order to get to this piece in order to remove it. And we got to remove a couple of the carpeting and trunk liners, um, making this job a little bit more detailed than most people would want it to be. So I'm going to do my best to show you guys what you actually need to see. This is the piece, the main piece that we have to remove in order to get to the bolts. Um, so it's clipped on here and here. And the way that you get this off is you have to put this behind it. You see how it's already coming loose a little bit? Behind it there and it'll pop upwards. So let's try to do that. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing here going to try and pop it up and that's how you get this top part off and I'm going to do the other side as well. Now that the compartment, the stone compartment is in the middle and you can actually take it out, just maneuver it a little bit and turn it to its side, you should be able to remove this. All right, putting this piece back later is very important that you line this up right here with right here. It's basically a switch that tells you, uh, that tells the car at least, whether or not you can actually open your top. So you gotta make sure that this middle piece there is completely lined up. Let's put this off to the side. Let's attack this next part. So there's a bolt right here. I'll tell you the size in just a moment. There's a star nut right here and I believe there's one more thing at the end here so this part helps right now to have it in the up position instead of the down position so turn it up and let's remove these two pieces right here one here and one at the end this here is a T25 and you can always put these right in the compartment right there so you never lose them as you can see, it's a little bit more loose. Time to get that guy back there. So the one back there is a 10 millimeter.
All right, so after you remove the T25 bolt right here, as well as the 10 millimeter bolt right there, there is one piece that's on the inside that I'm gonna have to uh, see if you guys can see. So this is just a little flap here. You can just lift it up as high as you can, but what we're doing is looking at the inside there. I'll try and get a light in there as well. All right, so it seems I'm able to get a light in there. So I can show you now, you're gonna flip this down, flip this down, and what you'll see is that's the guy that we need to get out. All right, so after you get that out, you should be able to remove this entire piece. And the way you do this is you use a flathead to lift it up. Let's see if I can show you on camera. And there it is. So, all it is is like a little Christmas tree clip. As far as I know, this piece you should be able to pull out now. There it comes. All right, so it's out. And what we need is right underneath here. So that's why you need to remove a little bit of the insulation and trunk liner. So this car has, I think, 110,000 miles on it now. The rear struts, I believe, have been changed before. I doubt they're original, um, but honestly, who knows? This doesn't look like it's been opened up before. Maybe it has, but not that I can tell. So it's quite possible that the struts on this were never changed by the previous owners. So we're gonna remove parts here and we should be able to get to the nut, which I can feel is right here and right there. So let's remove some of that insulation. So there's one. And there's the other. So I'm not gonna try and rip any more than I need to, but that's what you see there. The holy grail. Underneath this piece, which needed to be removed, moved a lot of stuff in order to get to it. Ah, if only BMW made life easy. So I'll tell you what size nut this is in just a second. So this nut right here is 13 millimeters. And all we're gonna do is loosen these guys right now. There's just two nuts. And what I'm doing is loosening them first so that when I raise up the car, it won't just fall off. It'll just uh, be a little bit looser for us. Sorry for the bad camera angle. I'm trying to do this with one hand. All right, so that's how you get to these bolts back here. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys who only saw pictures and wasn't sure really what you were looking at. But to take a step back, if you go into the trunk, there's a stowing compartment that needs to be removed. There is an 18 millimeter nut that needs to be removed. And there's a uh, T25 uh, bolt that needs to be removed, as well as a Christmas tree clip that needs to be removed in order to show the top strut mount. Now let's move on to taking out the 18 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the car. All right, so we're gonna jack up the rear. Um, just make sure that you put something in front of you, in, uh, behind your front tires so that your car can't roll back because you, as you know, the handbrakes are on the rear wheels. So once you lift up the uh, back end, the front end is free to move around. So make sure that you use something to protect yourself there. There's a spot in the middle um, that will allow you to jack the car up, the entire back end of the car up so that you could do both sides um, at the same time. Once the rear tires are off the ground, I would uh, put jack stands where they're supposed to be, just in case your hydraulic jack actually fails on you. 
All right, so now we're at the bottom of the car. Um, as you can see, the midpoint is a good spot to jack up the car. Make sure that you put jack stands all around. And uh, this is the 18 millimeter bolt that we have to get out on both sides. So let's do that now. All right, that's how you know it's out. Probably should have put something under the rear tires, um, but no big deal. I'll go and do that on the other side as well now. All right, now that the bottom here is free hanging, all you have to do is come up to the top and remove the rest of the nuts. And this entire thing should drop down after that. All right, let's see. There it is. And there is our rear strut. Let's check out the condition of these. Let's see how it is. Yeah, very easy to push down. And wow, terrible. Not even coming up at all. Explains the bad ride quality in this car right now. Not coming up at all. I wish there was a standardized system where they always put down the time of the year that they uh time in the year that they actually change this last that would make life so much easier for the next person to just be able to look and check out the life of their struts because a lot of the internet will tell you to push down on the rear of your car and see if it bounces mine did not bounce at all so it didn't look like the rear struts were bad but as you can see it's not even coming back up at all so what we're going to do is take a couple of things from this strut, uh, namely the boot, the bump stop, as well as this washer. I have a different strut mount and um, what we're going to do is uh, put on the new struts. All right, so these are our two new struts. Um, what I'm gonna do is add the reinforcement plate. The reason behind the reinforcement plate is the same in the front and the back. So if you have any questions about why I'm adding this reinforcement plate, just check out the video on installing the front struts and the reinforcement plates and you should be able to see why uh, I'm doing this to the rear as well, just for added protection. Um, after that, two gaskets just to uh, make sure there's no squeaks. And installing them back on the car is uh, just the reverse, so I'll show you that right now. I have one hand holding the strut down right now, or up right now, so that I can take the nut and just have it holding there. So let's see, you're gonna have to do this by feel if you don't have somebody with you, but it doesn't, shouldn't be too hard. Once you have one of the nuts in, you should be able to let go of the strut and put the other one in as well. Just make sure it's all aligned. So I would just hand tight these uh, bolts at the top for now. I wouldn't tighten them down all the way. And then we're gonna take care of the 18 millimeter bolt at the bottom of the car right now. So in order to uh, get this bolt to line up right here, as you can see, we're gonna have to use a second jack to jack this part up, or at least jack the bottom of the tire up so that the bolts will actually meet and, al and align. So we got about an inch to go and that's how much we actually have to jack up the car. Another option is to actually let down the car a little bit till the tire touches the ground, but you gotta be very careful with that because you don't wanna go too high. I'm actually gonna try that method with these pieces of wood still under the tire.
just a tad more to go. There we go. So, just gotta tighten this down. Now we just have to torque it down to the right settings. This one gets 70 foot-pounds. So let's torque this one down to spec. And the top one gets 10 foot-pounds to 15 foot-pounds. So I'm just gonna do this one by feel. After you torque down these nuts to the right settings, just put back the pieces of foam that you had to remove in order to get to those bolts or nuts. And then next thing that you're gonna do is just replace all the parts that came off. After that, basically lower your car and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this process, let me know. I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.